Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. to session 10 of Principles of Management course. I am your instructor Dr. Shekha N. Khera, faculty member at Delhi School of Management, Delhi Technological University. In previous sessions, we discussed about planning and forecasting, the introduction to the process. Today, we will try to see what is the process of forecasting and other nuances to it. The content flow for today's session would be including the process of forecasting, techniques for forecasting, challenges that forecasting process faces and effective guidelines how we can have right kind of forecasting. Beginning with the process of forecasting. Now what happens students? The organizations, they strive, they think a lot to prepare themselves for future and thus they think of forecasting. Here, the forecasting process can be simple or complex. The organizations, managers, they strive to gather information which can be relevant for forecasting. They are worried about how they will gather the information, how will they reconcile the information so that they can have clear cut forecasting for tomorrow. Now, within this, there is a possibility that they develop goals and plans for future attainment based on their forecasts. With these goals and plans, one condition applies that is there has to be an internal consistency between these goals and plans. What is more important at this stage is the competence and know-how and far-sightedness of the manager who is achieving these forecast plans and goals. Let us discuss the process of forecasting in detail now. As you can see here, the process of forecasting has these formal steps involved in it, which begins with determining of objectives, identifying the variables, deciding the time horizon, gathering of data, selection of forecasting model, data analysis and interpretation. And further, in the end, the forecast presentations are important and after that, the feedback plays a major role. Let us discuss these points one after the other in detail. Determining the objectives for forecasting. Students, you understand it very well that before we begin for any process, we need to know what are the major aims or objectives for that. So, the basic objective of forecasting is to support the decisions that are made on the basis of forecast. It is therefore necessary to clearly specify the objectives of forecast and also identify the areas of decision. Forecasting begins when an organization seeks the answers for its management questions. So what can be the management questions? All the worries they have if they want to launch a new product, increase their production line, hire a new employee, etc. So these are the sample questions of management question that an organization has to answer and need to determine the objective for the same. For that, managers should also state very clearly the role of forecast in the decision making process. People who are likely to be affected by these decisions should be made aware of the link between decisions and forecasts. Second step after we have determined the objective for the forecast that is for what are we forecasting, the second step is identifying the variables to be forecasted. Here at this stage the forecaster should decide the variables which can be of two categories. They can be 
internal variables or they can be external variables. The variables over which the management can exercise control are called as internal variables. The examples for internal variables can be quality of the product, features, packing, etc. Its price, marketing and distribution channels. While variables external to the organization remaining beyond its control are known as external variables. And these external variables may be labor market conditions, may be economic condition like a boom or a recession or may be fluctuation in rate of interest and exchange rate etc. So depending on the objectives formulated in the previous step, the forecaster should decide on the appropriate variables to be forecasted. So whether we have to forecast the external variables or the internal variables. Now we have reached to the third stage of this planning forecasting process which is deciding the time horizon. This stage involves the determination of the length of forecasting time. So what do we mean by that? This means that organization should choose short term, medium term or long term forecasting time horizon. In this they should also determine the time interval for each round of forecasting. So this time interval may be a year between two forecasts, may be biannual or quarter or a month. So for instance, financial budgets are normally prepared on the basis of annual forecasting. So for financial budget, we go for annual forecasting. Similarly, short term forecasting is appropriate for inventory management. Moving further to the next step after knowing on that what kind of time horizon we are going for. It is now the time to gather the data. Data which is the most important factor in forecasting because it is the crucial stage where the data is going to help us predict the future. The sources of data can be either internal, external or both. Internal data are normally readily available as they are mostly extracted from documents maintained by the organization. And external data which originates from outside the organization needs to be collected. Now organization at this stage must ensure that the data is factually correct and is of high quality. Now conventionally Aggregate data are better suited for forecasting and they are less time consuming and less expensive than the disaggregate data. Now students let us try to understand what is an aggregate data and what is an disaggregate data. When we are trying to identify the sales volume of a particular car brand, so number of cars sold is the aggregate data. And disaggregate data is the demographics of the customer, those who have purchased it. So that means on gender basis, how many males, females they have purchased the cars or on the basis of region, in which region, what is the sale of the purchase of car, income level of the people. So when we divide the broader data into the subpopulation or division, it is called as disaggregate data. So data gathering needs to have this feature of whether the data is aggregate or disaggregate data. Now we, as we are moving further in the process of forecasting, the next step is selection and evaluation of forecasting model. This is very critical stage because different situations will require different types of models. 
Now what happens, what managers do after careful examination of objectives and problems of forecasting that they have identified in the previous steps, the forecaster should determine the model that best serves the purpose for forecasting. And also when the manager is deciding on forecasting, they should consider aspects such as probable end users of forecast, the nature of forecast, type of forecast and relevance of historical data which is available for forecast. Also the level of accuracy which is required for forecasting. With level of accuracy we mean that there is some level of tolerance for error in accuracy as forecast cannot be 100% correct. Also the manager has to take into consideration the time and cost benefit of the forecast. So here I would like to emphasize that while choosing specific forecasting model, organization must ensure that chosen model will perform well without making too many assumptions on the data gathering process. Now that we have gathered the data, the time is to analyze it. Analyze it and give it a meaning that is give its interpretation. Using chosen model, forecaster should analyze the data to generate a forecast. The purpose of application of data analysis is to find something which we call as hidden predictive information and this hidden predictive information is what tomorrow will help us to reach to some kind of decision. Forecasters usually interpret data using their knowledge and experience. But obviously different forecasters since they are utilizing their knowledge and experience, they will interpret the da same data in different ways. Why different ways students? Because they have their own knowledge and experience which may have some inter differences. Data reliability together with forecasters expertise. So this is one category variable. This is another variable largely determines the accuracy of forecasting. And in the process of forecasting, we are highly looking forward to have more accurate process or more accurate forecast plan. Thus, as a manager, we need to focus on star variables that is reliability and expertise of the manager. Once we have done this, we are now ready with the forecast statement and this forecast statement needs to be presented to all stakeholders of the organization. And this is a written report. It is a oral presentation. Students, it is a written report. It is a oral presentation or maybe both. The forecaster needs to understand that proper communication of forecasting results to management is an important as making the forecast. Now what will happen if people in the organization do not know what is the forecast outcome? They may not know what are the reasons behind the plan or the goals which have been made and also they may not be aware of what is the mission and vision for them and how the forecast has been determined. So communication of forecast plays an important role Along with the statement, forecast to be presented to management must be lucid, understandable and reader oriented. So that means everyone should understand it in same perspective. That's important. It should also, you know, the, the quality of forecast should also be that it should inspire the confidence in the members of the organization and is or must also allow the manager to take relevant decisions. So it would be better if report is relevant, information is recent and tables are not too lengthy. That will be an added on feature to a good forecast presentation. And finally in the end, as in the end of every process, we go for feedback, feedback which is nothing but evaluation, evaluation of the document that you have produced. Thus, forecasting is a continuous activity. You need to remember this and it is hence essential that forecasting process has adequate provisions of gathering feedback about its efficiency and also for making improvements if required. This is the feedback which enables the manager to find out for any improvements if required.
the forecasting process must permit free and frank exchange of opinion between the organization members or any kind of concerns if the organization members have or their views as well. Input and guidance from managers that is their concerns and views, supervisor and expert must be given due importance when forecasting process and model techniques are decided. So, this, this was about the process of forecasting. Now, we move on to understand the techniques for forecasting, but students here forecasting techniques can broadly be classified into quantitative techniques and qualitative techniques. While choosing specific technique, managers should consider the following factors. So, what are the following factors that manager has to understand whether we go for quantitative technique or a qualitative technique. The first factor is availability of time. So, it refers to the time required for data generation and forecasting of the report. Normally, the frequency of forecast decides upon what would be the timeline for forecast. Like if the frequency of forecast whether it is daily, weekly, monthly or yearly this frequency will decide on what should be the timeline for frequency techniques that we have to identify. Also we have to see whether short, medium or long term forecast have to be done. Second factor that influences in identifying the technique for forecasting is technical sophistication required. So, it refers to the extent to which any kind of statistical or mathematical model is required in order to identify the forecasting technique and for data interpretation. The third influencing factor is cost of forecasting. So, it refers to cost per forecast. Here it includes the expenses to be incurred for data gathering and interpretation. So, definitely when we are going and choosing a technique for forecasting, we need to see what is the amount of cost it is going to incur. Next factor we need to identify before we go for technique selection is data availability and accessibility. So, it refers to right quality of data which we need to access for our decision making or for, for forecasting. Data variability refers to the frequency of changes in data which is used for forecasting. Now, how do we say that frequency of changes take place in data that we have to use for forecasting? If any sudden change takes place in maybe natural environment or in the other business environmental factors. These sudden changes bring in changes in the policy frameworks and hence as a result data variability may take place. Thus we say frequency of change of data, how quickly the data is changing or whether it is a stable data for long period of time. Technique also has to be considered while we are choosing it whether data is highly variable or whether it has some lesser frequency of change. Next is ex extent of details required. Under this, it shows whether the forecasting should be based on aggregate data or disaggregate data. This we, I have already explained you aggregate data that is when it is for broader volume and disaggregate data is the sub population of that data. So, extent of details that is how much in depth we want to know about, about the particular variable for forecasting will be judged through the aggregate or disaggregate data. Then degree of accuracy required, 
degree of accuracy is the tolerance tolerable level of accuracy in forecasting. How much error are we permitting? That is also a factor which enable us to identify the techniques of forecasting. And then comes the turning points. Turning points are possibilities of any kind of opportunities or threats in the environment for the organization. All these variables enable the manager to take a crisp view of what kind of technique should we go ahead with. Another scientist by the name Scott Armstrong has identified six ways of selecting the forecasting techniques. By now you understand students we are discussing about the techniques which can be qualitative and quantitative and we are trying to understand when a manager has to go for finding out whether shall I go for a qualitative technique or a quantitative technique what should I choose the previous variables were the guidelines that he should refer to and these are the current six ways that Scott has given that he needs to take into consideration. So first is convenience of forecaster, market popularity of the technique, Structured judgment which refers to process by which forecasters compare various forecasting techniques against the explicit criteria developed by them. So while they are comparing these techniques they are trying to find out the best alternative that is the best technique to be chosen. Then statistical criteria how far is it feasible? Relevant tra relative track record of past performance of the techniques, how far those techniques or the technique we think of choosing has been fruitful in giving right or accurate forecast and guidelines from the prior research. So all these tools help the manager to choose right kind of technique to, for tomorrow's working. We shall now discuss the forecasting techniques in detail. The two techniques we have qualitative and quantitative techniques. Let's move further and try to understand these techniques. Under qualitative forecasting techniques, the important models of qualitative techniques include Delphi method, jury of executive opinion, judgmental bootstrapping, conjoint analysis, role playing, sales force opinion and market factor analysis. We shall be discussing them one after the other in detail. Delphi method is a qualitative technique that we by now know and what exactly happens in it? Here this method uses a panel of experts ideally with different backgrounds to generate relevant forecast. Forecast in this method is based on collective opinion of these experts and the participants of this group may be internal to the organization or can be external experts from the other organization. This method is effective in allowing group of individuals or as a whole as well to deal with complex problems by structuring the group communication process. So having a structured group communication process will enable the experts to come to a relevant conclusion. The steps in Delphi forecasting process is there is a planner or a coordinator. Now what he will do? He prepares a questionnaire on the issues that require a decision. Now student what is the issue? Issue is nothing but initially we had discussed about the management question. So this management question is the issue here. Such questionnaires normally contain information on character, causes and future shape of problems at hand. These questionnaires are distributed individually to a group of experts. So they have their own respective questionnaire who then respond to 
the questionnaire by providing their opinions and just judgments along with justification. So, there is always has to be a reason why they are giving x, y, z opinion or judgment on that problem. The next step of Delphi method is the individual responses from each expert of panel member is summarized by whom? By the planner or the coordinator. Now, these collected responses are then sent back to the experts for their opinion and comments. So, these collected responses students here and without identifying the individuals behind the responses. So, anonymity of, of the experts is maintained. Experts now they get an opportunity to change their assumption on issues and on their predictions. Why they get this benefit? Because they are able to see the opinion and comments of others also or collective opinion and comments of the group. So, each expert is free to change his or her previous position and come up with new opinions and judgments and the expert once again send back the same or revised opinions to the planner or the coordinator. Here you can students see that it is taking a lot of time which tomorrow will become its limitation. Now then in the next step the planner coordinator prepares a second summary after the second round of responses and transmits them to expert of the groups. This process continues until the expert they reach to a some kind of agreement in their responses. But there is always a possibility that even after several rounds of discussions amongst them, there is no agreement reached. Thus, the coordinator must terminate the process after pinpointing whether the disagreements occur and use the results to indicate the specific problems in predicting the process. So, what made the experts not to come to a conclusion is also that the planner or coordinator has to discuss. Now, since in this particular method of Delphi, the individuals they did not meet face to face. So, the benefit of this technique is no influence of one over the other. While nobody dominated the other, so there was no one who was imposing their views on each other. Such technique is good for medium to long term forecasting. But as we have already discussed, it is quite lengthy and time consuming activity. Thus, the activity may not be preferred by many managers. Also, the quality of expert matters which can be one of the challenging features of Delphi technique. After Delphi technique under qualitative method, the second technique is jury of expert opinion or executive opinion method. In this method, it is a top down approach. What do we mean by top down approach? In this technique, a forecast is arrived through a combination of opinions and prediction made by knowledgeable experts or managers. And managers at higher level, they come together to discuss their opinions, what will happen in future. These managers may be the heads of various functional departments like production, marketing, finance or HR. And in this method, members of jury, they present their own initial opinion based on the data given to them. They then review each other's work and also revise their own opinion and estimates. Finally, the individual opinions are combined to complete forecasting. So, wherever necessary empirical analysis can be done to support or supplement the executive opinions. Now, this method can also be adopted for single functional plans like for example, sales department where managers from different regions may form a jury. All sales people may form jury and they can forecast the future of sales. This method is an ideal approach for forecasting when there is no past data 
available because here we are relying on the prediction capability of the manager. This method also provides a kind of peer review to indicate errors in forecasting in a very friendly manner. But the limitation of this method is that the dominant members unlike in the jury of opinion may tend to dominate and impose their views which may distort the forecasting process. And lastly, if several forecasts are needed, expert from forecast may prove to be expensive exercise. Next is judgmental bootstrapping. When organizations cannot afford expensive methods like jury of executive opinion, they may opt for less expensive method that is judgmental bootstrapping. Now in this method, subjective judgment of experts are gathered and then converted into objective procedures. So that means what is happening as, an, as a manager, my opinion is taken and my opinion is then transformed into various rules and regulations. So this process involved the judgmental bootstrapping method is as follows. Forecasting experts make their prediction for a series of conditions and the process is then converted into set of rules by regression regressing the forecasts again the information used by the forecaster. So prediction is converted into set of rules in judgmental bootstrapping. Also in case of sales forecasting for instance an example here is experts will predict future sales performance of the company in different geographical regions and judgmental bootstrapping models are most useful for repetitive complex forecasting problems for which data are not sufficiently available. So this is a benefit of this technique that one can utilize it in the complex and repetitive problems and in lack of data also. Once introduced judgmental bootstrapping models can become a low cost procedure for making forecast. This method has another benefit, it ensures better accuracy than other qualitative forecasting methods. Even though these improvements are quite modest, still it is one of the most favored process of forecasting. Then comes conjoint analysis. Now what is conjoint analysis? In this category, the manager takes a survey of consumer preferences. The pulse of consumer is known, style, preferences, desires and features the consumer wants in services and products. Based on that survey, they can bring in changes in their product and forecast their future sales. Here sales people help the organization to come up with right kind of consumer preferences because they are very closely attached to the consumer, they deal with the consumer on very regular basis. So the primary objective of this forecasting technique is to identify market preferences and then determine the market potential for new products and new features of existing products. The results help to estimate the likely preference for product under the consideration. It also facilitates the manager to make an indirect estimate of customers willingness to pay for product improvement and modifications. And in this method what happens forecaster seeks the opinion of customer in a target market and thus they are able to predict what kind of estimated product the consumer is requiring. Next technique for forecasting under qualitative method is role playing. Role playing students I believe you understand one has to put themselves into shoes of the managers or other managers. So role playing can be used by managers to forecast the decisions. Here in this method the focus is in the scenarios where there are lot of conflicts available or conflicting point of views are there then role playing plays a major role. For instance a sales manager of a company may want to know what would be the likely response of competitor if a new sales promotion measure is used or new, new sales promotion technique is used how the competitor is going to behave. 
if we want to know this in such situations role playing plays an important role as a part of forecasting process the administrator manager prepares a description of situation explains the role to participants and also provides a short list of possible decisions and then the administrator asks the participants to play their roles and uses their decisions as forecast here the participants they engage in realistic interactions with the other role players this simulation exercise generally lasts between 30 to 60 minutes and this method is suitable for situations where data is insufficient for us and we can go for prediction by role playing however this method may be unstable for some kind of complex situations where participants are required to play divergent roles actively next qualitative technique for sales forecast for forecasting is sales force opinion now in this method sales manager gets sales forecast from sales people who have detailed knowledge of customer including their taste preferences and attitude and it is significant forecasting technique especially for sales forecasting sales forecast is a dynamic method as sales people can no note the changes of consumer taste and preferences limitation of this method is that sales people may tend to underestimate or overestimate the future sales projection to suit their conditions then comes market factor analysis under this method forecasting is done on the basis of behavior of one or other market factors the basic assumption of this method is that it is possible to predict the future sales by studying the behavior of certain relevant and critical factors so the process of this forecasting involves the identification of important market factors and understanding their relationship with sales the identified marking factors normally have a decisive influence on sales performance of products marketed by the organization however it should be ensured that number of these factors is kept to a minimum for simple effective and purposeful forecasting example here is for instance an automobile company is studying the potential for manufacturing replacement tires can consider the average age of tire as an important factor for forecasting this average age of tire becomes then a market factor so identifying the right kind of market factor to choose the future forecast quickly recapitulating about the qualitative techniques the, that we have done in the techniques forecast are made on the basis of certain things like judgment which are the common feature for all qualitative techniques judgment intuition and informed decisions also the techniques particularly use past data then they can go for unique knowledge and experience of experts and different forecasters can make divergent forecast out of some datas but what happens these techniques also have a problem of some kind of bias from the forecasters for future predictions so thus often managers use qualitative forecasting techniques for taking decisions which are of medium and long term duration now students let us move on to the quantitative forecasting techniques under the quantitative forecasting techniques they are highly objective in nature unlike the qualitative techniques which were subjective in nature in these techniques more of mathematical models and statistical models are used 
also these techniques since mathematical and statistical models are used the results that are the outcome of these techniques are generally similar. So, unlike qualitative techniques which relies on opinion or maybe some past data, these techniques felicitate the forecaster to consider large amount of data. Now, this is an, a unique feature of qualitative forecasting techniques and along with large amount of data, we can also have several variables together while we forecast. So, quantitative methods are found to be more helpful in predicting or making better predictions. They are broadly classified into two categories, time series methods and explanatory or causal methods. Simply speaking, I shall be discussing these methods in detail, but if we understand in simple terms time series methods is which relies on the trend analysis, which relies on data which is based on past trends. For longer duration of time we look into the past data and we come to some mathematical calculations of the data which helps in predict the future. The second technique that is exploratory or causal research. In this case the technique not only predicts the future, but also cites the reason behind it. That is what is going to happen is the answer given by exploratory research or technique along with what why such prediction is being given is also which is a feature of exploratory or causal research. So, students let us discuss these two techniques in detail. In time series methods, this method is called time series because it relies on past data. So, this method forecasts are made entirely on the basis of historical pattern of data. In other words, forecaster need only the past value of variable to be predicted. So, any variable that we have identified to be predicted, we need the past value. The basic assumption of this method is that past trends are good indicators of future trends and the past trends are carried over to future too except in unforeseen situation. So, that is the premise for time series analysis and also the time this method can produce accurate results of future. Here in any time series measurement of past trend or movements are taken at successive points or timelines. So, this is an important feature of time series that data is collected at successive points or periods. For instance, measurement can be taken at every hour, every day, every week, etcetera. So, to predict their future annual sales, what will organization do? Organization may review their sales over the past several years. So, these years can be 10 to 15 years they can see how the sales have taken place and on the basis of this data of past 10 to 15 years sales they can predict the future sales. What are the methods used here? Simple moving average, weighted moving average, auto regressive, Box Jenkins model etcetera are few models of time series method. They are all mathematical and statistical methods. Time series are generally more helpful for predicting broad environmental factors than for predicting the impact of present or future actions. Since time series relies on past trend of prediction, there can be danger in their use if environmental changes are overlooked. So, this has to be taken into much alertness that we need to see that environmental changes to be considered well while we are dealing with time series methods. The next method of qualitative nature is sorry, the next method of quantitative nature is explanatory or causal method. As I have already explained, the basic assumption of this method is that the forecast has a cause and effect relationship. This method considered as very sophisticated form of forecasting and prediction is this method are based on multitude of factors, probabilities and assumptions. That is why it is called because of these characteristics it is called as a sophistic, 
sophisticated form of forecasting. So that means that this forecasting method aims at explaining the functional relationship between the variables. Functional relationship between the dependent variables. So what can be the example for this? Like sales volume and the independent variables or predictors like advertising expenditure. So what is the cause and effect relationship or functional relationship between the two is identified here. In explanatory method they are also called as predictive power as well as explanatory power. As I mentioned they predict what is going to happen and they explain why is it going to happen. So unlike time series which predicts what the future trend will be, this method explains how and why a particular trend will occur. They allow the manager to assess the likely impact of changes in predictors and also one of the merits of this method is it helps the manager to get deeper insight into causal relationship amongst the variables. Now students we have discussed the quantitative and qualitative methods for forecasting. There are certain other methods which in addition to the above methods play a major role in forecasting in the organization. These methods include first that is focus forecasting. In this approach of forecasting is developed by Bernard T. Smith and in this method managers try to have a variety of forecasting models like they go for simple moving average, weighted average, exponential soothing methods for forecasting. And now what do they do? This produces highest accuracy with least forecasting errors is identified. So whether it is method 1, 2 or 3, which one is giving highest accuracy with least error is taken by the manager. This is called as focus forecasting method. Now there are two basic assumptions of this model. These are that modern forecasting techniques need not always be better than the traditional one. So this is a takeaway. Not always are better than the traditional ones. And there can be no single technique available for all purposes. or all forecasting purposes. Second method in addition to other methods is Bass diffusion method. Bass diffusion method basically helps us to understand what will be the time taken to have a diffusion of new product into the market. So what is diffusion of new product into the market? How or what time will be taken, how much time will be taken by the consumers to adopt the new product and what is the potential income that is the highest income that the product can raise to. So this model employs statistical tools to estimate a new product's diffusion or adoption speed and the total market production. A product sales increase in a given period time indicates the speed of diffusion while maximum sales tells us the potential of total market of that product. Break even analysis is a point at which organization makes neither profit nor loss. So it is the method that can be applied to a product and investment or entire operation of the organization which tells the organization's profit forecasting. This technique focuses on interrelationship of cost, sales volume and profit and this analysis shows how much revenue an organization should make to cover both its fixed and variable costs. So this here fixed costs and variable costs needs to be defined. So fixed cost is the cost which remains constant. What can be the example here? Example can be rent or salary while variable cost is the cost which varies 
with the level of production and what can be the example here like wages or material. After break even analysis we have another technique by the term PERT pro project evaluation and review technique. So, this project uh, evaluation review technique is an important project scheduling technique where the management allows the production manager to forecast, plan, manage and control the complex projects. So, this is a feature of it that PERT is used for complex projects. These projects are typically made up of numerous separate performed by a variety of departments, units and individuals. So, projects at various levels in the organization are clubbed together and then they become the complex projects which is then dealt with the PERT technique. In PERT technique what do we do? We have a diagram which shows the flow of project and indicate the interdependence of the task and they also indicate the sequence of events from start of the project to its termination. So, this PERT flow chart is an effective forecasting technique for future essential. It also facilitates the managers to explore and consider any kind of future possibility or any kind of future difficulty which can be foreseen. It is a visual representation of the task sequencing. Then the next technique is budgeting. Budgeting is also a forecasting technique. What is a budget? It is a written estimate of how organization or department will perform financially. Budgets are fundamentally the forecast of organization concerning their future financial performance. So, forecast may be for whole organization or through a master budget for different functional through functional budgets. So, this can be one, this can be another kind of budget. After budget, the additional technique includes linear programming techniques. They are purely mathematical techniques and they determine the best outcome that is maximum profit or lowest cost with the aid of mathematical models. It is basically a problem solving approach to solve broad class of optimizing problems. We have to reach to optimize solution. Optimize solution is where we have maximum profit and lowest cost incurred. And another feature, it also includes source allocation problems. So, this technique has wide application in business planning and decision making. Like in operations management, it has found applications in areas like personal scheduling, distribution and logistics inventory control etcetera. So, these are the areas where it is applied. Now, since linear programming focuses on solving problems related to accomplishment of single goal, there is an over and above additional technique that has come up which is called as goal programming technique. Now, an improvement over linear programming technique for dealing with problems arising out of multiple goals here. Linear programming deals with a single goal that is one goal while multiple goals are dealt with the goal programming technique. The key aim of GPT is to getting satisfactory solution rather than the optimum solution to conflict. So, this is the difference between linear programming and GPT. It gives satisfactory solution, linear programming tries to come up with optimum solution. Now, we come, out, come on to a concept of challenges in forecasting. So, here students we have forecast errors, data obsolescence, data error and wrong assumptions that can play a dangerous role in having wrong kind of prediction or forecasting. Forecasting errors, let us start with this. So, they may be two kinds of forecasting errors, they can be positive or they can be negative that is you over forecast or you under forecast and there can be difference between the factual errors values and the actual values, sorry. I repeat students here, there can be a difference between the forecasted values and the actual values. This is called as forecast error, which can be both positive and negative. 
Now these are the prominent forecasting errors that take place. So here we have these errors because of the biases in the forecast. First is the survivorship bias. Now in survivorship bias what happens due to non-availability of information. about the time of forecasting. For example, in recruitment forecasting, data analysis they use past data relating to those who have completed certain stages in selection process and not those who participated in selection process but got eliminated at the earlier stages. So that means we only collect data of those who survived that process. Thus, it is called as survivorship bias. Then the next bias is time period bias. Under time period bias, it pertains to results that are time period specific. So this means that time period is normally we know attributed to short, medium and long term. So for forecasting accuracy, time period must be appropriate to exercise. So generally accuracy is decreased when the time period covered for forecast is increased. Then comes the next trap or bias that is called as anchoring trap. So tendency to reach to premature conclusions. That means that if the manager has got some information, he quickly concludes for a forecast and only basis of initial data when he has forecasted, the result is anchoring trap. Here the management manager needs to see that undue influence of this initial impression may affect the subsequent judgments. So premature conclusion on the basis of only the first information or initial information is called as anchoring trap. Then comes status quo trap. When data analyst develops the tendency to believe only in the current situation. Current situation is wherever he is in whatever situation he wants to remain there. It would persist in future too. Then we say that he is a st into a status quo trap. Risk of forecasting error may force analysts to favor those alternatives that perpetuate the current situation. So he doesn't want to move out of that current situations. Analyst, why will he prefer this status quo when alternative solution to the problems are large in number? So they escape and they tend to remain in the same trap. Confirming evidence trap. Confirming evidence trap means that the outcome of this trap may be analyst inclination to give too much weightage to supporting information and inadequate weightage to conf conflicting information. What does this mean? This means that whatever he feels is supporting, he will accept it and conflicting he will not see thus leading to a error. Then comes sunk cost trap. In this data analysis, ten analysts tend to choose alternative that justify their past decision rather than what is the right decision. Framing trap leads to the same problem may get very different responses when it becomes framed in different ways. So framing trap is when different ways or items are looked at for the same problem, we reach to the framing trap by the analyst. Overconfidence trap is when forecaster makes exaggerated claims on accuracy of the forecast. He is more confident or overconfident on unrealistic scenarios. Then comes the prudence trap when forecasters are over conscious while estimating the uncertainties associated with the future. He is into the pr prudence trap. Recallability trap is the recallability of the or the tendency of recall by the uh, manager where he relies on his memory and he feels that my memory or past events are telling me the right path to move ahead. And finally, the data mining bias is when data miners refer to searching data set and 
till some hidden pattern or predictive information is found. This error occurs when data miners tend to overlook the measurement error in the data. So, students as we are talking about various challenges in forecasting, next is data obsolescence. Data obsolescence means that the manager relies most on the past data despite even thinking that that may not be true in the future. So, that can also create a challenge. Next challenge is data error. So, data error means how much data is accurate or what are the gaps in gathering the data. If there has been some issue in quality of the set of data, then that will affect the quality of forecast as well. And finally, if as the manager depends highly on the assumptions for prediction of future, if there, those assumptions go dangerously wrong, then the prediction can be highly incorrect. So, the stu students finally, the summary of today's session is that forecasting is a systematic effort for predicting the future and it is very important for organization as it helps in or facilitates in anticipating better situational awareness, better responsiveness, improved coordination, better customer service, higher utilization of resources and lowers the cost, fewer future shocks, quality decisions and standards of comparison. These are the references students I have used for this particular session. I request you to refer to these books for any kind of detailed understanding. And here I would like to thank students for uh, wonderful listening sessions that you are doing since past 9-10 sessions. So, we will be taking forward this session to session 11 where we will discuss the next topic of this principles of management course. Thank you.